Greetings. Welcome to the channel. If you newly subscribed, I am People, and this right here is the House of David. Today's message is going to be Paul's curse on Islam. Now, the Christians have failed to see that the apostate, the self-proclaimed Apostle Paul, was the last Gentile messenger for them. He claimed to be last seen of Christ. He claimed to be the least, meaning that he is the greatest. He claimed to be the father. That is 1 Corinthians 4.15. He stole saints from Deuteronomy 33 and 2. He claimed to be the Ishmael that was persecuting Isaac, seeing that he started off first persecuting the church, and that is seen in Galatians chapter 4, that Christians and Israelite camp cult leaders don't want to say nothing about. And he was the thief, okay? Now, I've already did a message, pick a side. Today, you're going to have to pick a side because Paul was your last and final messenger if you're a Christian, okay? He was the Deuteronomy 18.18 prophet in his own words. And you Christians have failed to recognize him. You failed to give him the respect that he says he deserves. Now, he said he was the father in Christ Jesus. In other words, he recognized Moses and he recognized the prophet Esau. You call him Jesus. And he said, look, I'm the last and final messenger. He claimed to be the father of the Christian church. Now, let's get on Paul's curse upon Islam. This is going to be seen in Galatians 1 and 8. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. So there it is. That right there is the scripture in the New Testament that the Christians get excited about that hate Islam. They think they can debunk Islam simply by this passage. But I'm going to prove to you that this passage is proof of the divination that is in Christianity. Now let's read that again slow. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. Now, in other words, he's saying, even if an angel brings you another message that's other than this message, let that person be a curse. Now, most Christians, it's sad to say, but they do not know how Islam began. Now, believe it or not, but Islam began by an angel appearing to the prophet Mohammed. Now, you might not have known that, but today your faith is strengthened because now you're like, yeah, pull, pull. Okay, because a lot of you did not know that Paul was cursing Islam in Galatians 1 and 8. Now, let's keep going. Let's get a precept on this same passage. Let's go to 1 Samuel 18 and verse 9. And Saul eyed David from that day forward. Now Saul is going into the word Saul like you see something. And that's perfectly right in this passage because Saul saw David. Saul eyed David. His jealousy Okay, allowed him to see David in the future and curse him. Now, you might be like, what are you talking about? He cursed Islam, not David. We'll get back to that. Now, he cursed Islam in the future, right here in this passage, and I'm going to prove it. Verse 10, and it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied. Let that sink in. The first thing he does after this evil spirit 
from God comes upon him is he prophesies. Okay? Now, ain't that what Paul did in Galatians 1 and 8? He cursed Islam according to his prophecy. Going on. And he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand. Now, house can mean his church. And that's perfectly right. Because we know that Saul cursed Islam in his so-called house of God. And David played with his hand as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. So David would play the harp. And this would cause the evil spirit he had from God to go away at some times. This happened before he ever conquered the Philistine, the champion, Goliath. He would come to Saul's house and he would play the harp and this evil spirit would go away. Now I want you to think, what is that going into? David playing with his hand. This is going into music, but this is also going into the recitation. This is going into the Quran, seeing that the Quran is music. Okay, now let's get Isaiah 42 and 10 to confirm this. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Now, according to the Bible, he caused Israel's song to cease. He said he would turn it into lamentation. He said he would turn it into howlings. He said he would cause the song of Israel to cease. And that is going into their prophecy. That is going into their psalm book. You know those famous quotes that say, God have not dealt so with any other nation. Meaning that God only dealt with Israel. God said that that song book was over. And now he says, sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea, uh-oh, and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages that Kadar doth inhabit. Now, Kadar is the second eldest of Ishmael. Let the inhabitants of the rock, Silla, the mountains in the Arabian Peninsula, let them shout from the top of the mountains. So why is God telling the nation of Ishmael to sing a new song? And I truly believe and I'm thoroughly convinced that that song is talking about the Quran. Okay. The corn. Get it? Corn, Quran. We'll come back to that too. Going on, let's go back to where we was at. The evil spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied. We see that in Galatians 1 and 8. In the midst of the house, and David played with his hand. As at other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. Now think about wall. I told you the gospel means go spell. What can you spell in wall? Law. He planned on nailing David with the law. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 and 37 that everything that Paul says is the commandments of God. In other words, it is the law of God. So right here we have Saul cursing Islam with the law, with his prophylline or his prophesying. Let's keep going. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And we'll come back to that too. Now, let's think about this. Here we have Galatians 1 and 8 talking about cursing Islam. And right here in 1 Samuel 1, 8, 9 on down is a story 
about Saul trying his best to kill David with his law, with his prophecy. Okay, now let's go back up to 1 Samuel 18 and let's start at verse 7. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul have slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. And Saul was very wroth and the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands. And to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day forward. So there was something that those women were singing about that made him sour, that made him jealous. Oh, let's go to Deuteronomy 33 and 2. And he said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, that is Arabia, that is Mecca. And he came with ten thousands of saints from his right hand with a fiery law for them. There's only one man of history that fulfilled this prophecy that appeared in Mecca, 629 CE, with ten thousand converts. This is the man that has made Saul sour. Now Saul saw this. This is what hit him. This is what made him sour. And because he seen the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, showing up in Mecca, 629 CE with ten thousands of saints. That's what made him curse Islam. And I'm going to show you more. Now let's go to the word thousands. Saul has slain his thousands. What is that going into? These women were telling on Saul. What does it mean? Saul has slain his thousands. Let's meditate on thousands. Now thousands can go into with his thou has said. All his thou has said. All of his false prophecy. All of his so-called law. Paul has killed thousands upon thousands upon thousands with his thou has said. Also, Saul is the man who was like Moses, who killed an Egyptian and hid him in the sand. You know, the Bible says that Moses murdered an Egyptian and hid him in the sand. This is going to be Exodus chapter 2 and 12. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Now this is going into Benjamin's dirty secret. This is going into the devil's dirty secret. That nobody knows about. But right here in the house of David. Right here in the house of David. We are shining the light. On that which was done. In the darkness. So Saul. Killing his thousands. Is going into his murder. Of Jesus. On biblical record. Saul was the one. Who killed the prophet Isa. Notice I said on biblical record. And don't nobody know about it. It's hidden in the sand. Paul was the one who killed the Christian church. And don't nobody know about it. Although he was doing it publicly. Before he even was a part of the church. But it's hid in the sand. Don't nobody know about it. Also, in the wilderness of Arabia, Paul tried his best to murder a man's religion. The prophet Muhammad, peace of blessings be upon him. He cursed Islam. And he hid it in the sand. And this is going back to when Saul took the javelin and he tried 
to pin David to the wall and David got out the way twice. Why? The first time the prophet Isa was rescued by Allah. So Allah took him alive. So David got out the way the first time. The second time David got out the way is going into the nation of Islam and how he tried his best to curse it, although it is the number one growing religion today. And by 2050, 2075, we will be the largest religion. So David got out the way twice. The only person Paul was successful at murdering was the church, was the body of Christ. Paul was the man that was like Jephthah, who had no son to sacrifice because Allah took him. And he took his precious little daughter that didn't know a man. She didn't know Jesus as her Messiah. And he did what? He set her on fire. He set her on fire. As the prophet Muhammad told us, God will give every Muslim a Jew and a Christian and he will say this is your ransom from the fire. So what they thought to do to the prophet Isa fell upon them. Just like the three Hebrew boys in the book of Daniel. When they were thrown into the fire, they were unharmed. But the fire jumped out and got those men who threw them into the fire. Same thing with Daniel in the lion's den. Okay. His accusers were thrown in the lion's den. And before they ever touched the ground, the lions break all their bones. So we see that Saul was only successful in sacrificing his own church. Now there's a story of that in the book of Samuels. Okay. Saul had... 85 priests of no murdered. Okay. Just like the New Testament King Saul. Who was murdering the church. I told you. Saul of the Old Testament. And Saul of the New Testament. Are one and the same. Now before we go back to sin. Let's get some more. In Exodus 2 and 12. We see that he murdered the Egyptian. Okay. He, he murdered the Joseph. The Jesus. Peace be upon him, on biblical record, and tried to hide it. Now let's keep going. Verse 13. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. So in other words, he see his people fighting. And he said unto him that did the wrong, wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, who made you a prince? And they judge over us. In other words, we smell your hypocrisy. You a hypocrite. Here you is. You just murdered the prophet Isa. You murdered your church. You even attempted to murder the religion of Islam. And you trying to tell me what to do? This is why Paul was mocked. This is why Paul had a man in his own church. Who had his own father's wife. Why it was mocking Paul. Because he was the man with the stolen church. Paul was the man. Who stole his father's wife. He stole his father's church. Now going back. To 1 Samuel 18 and 8. And Saul was very wroth. And the saying displeased him. And he said. They have ascribed unto David. Ten thousands. And to me. They have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? Let me tell you something. The kingdom is slipping from the Christian. The kingdom is slipping from the house of Saul. The house of Saul, which is Christianity, is getting weaker and getting weaker and getting weaker every day. But the house of David. It's getting stronger and stronger by the day. Why? Because we worship God with no partners. We worship God with no partners and we don't take no lords in addition to God. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 33 and 2. And he said the Lord came from Sinai. That is speaking of Moses and rose up from Seir. 
That is speaking of the prophet Esau because Seir comes from Esau. Not only that, Seir is right next to Judah. And Jesus' ministry began in that mountain range. Not only that, Jesus rose up. He rose up before a cross. Allah took him alive. So Deuteronomy 33 and 2 is talking about Moses. Then it's talking about the prophet Isa. Peace be upon them. And then it goes on to talk about a Gentile messenger. The last and final Gentile messenger. Who would come with 10,000 Muslims. And from his right hand would go a fiery law or a new book. Now Paul was like Nathaniel. They looking right now in Ezekiel 37 and say, ooh, that's talking about me. You know that's black people problem. We look at a scripture and say, oh, 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 that's me. No, that's exactly what Paul did. He looked at Deuteronomy 33 and 2 where the first time saints was mentioned and he said, you know what? I'm the last and final messenger. Moses came. God spoke briefly about him. Jesus came, God spoke briefly about him, but I'm that Deuteronomy 18 and 18 prophet. God is going into detail about me. He thought he was the last and final messenger. The church don't get it. That's why he kept calling the church saints, calling the church saints, 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 all the time, saints, saints, saints. Jesus never called the church saints. This was all Paul. Paul thought he was somebody and the church don't even know that Paul believed that he was the last and final messenger. Now, let's get some more precept to go with that. This is going to be in the book of 1 Corinthians. And I'm going to teach you about Corinthians in a minute. This is going to be 1 Corinthians 15 and 8. And last of all, see, I told you. He thought he was the last and final messenger. And last of all, he was seen of me also. As one born out of due time, all you Christians talking about you got this fake visitation from Jesus. Paul is calling you a liar because Paul is saying that he was the last one who seen Christ. Verse 9. For I am the least. See, he believed that he was greater than John the Baptist. For I am the least of the apostles. That am not meet to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. In other words, Paul believed that he was the Ishmael. Persecuting Isaac. Okay, that's why God said, I will make of Ishmael a great nation. He was talking about Paul who stole the covenant of Ishmael. And that's why God said, but my covenant will be in Isaac. Speaking of the prophet Isa, I-S-S-A. And that's the truth. Paul stole the covenant of Ishmael. So God had to tell us. The covenant will be in Isaac. And just like Joseph was the Messiah of another nation, it's the same thing with the prophet Isa. He is the Messiah of the Muslim and the Muslim only. You can't get him in that New Testament. You can't get him in those skinny cows that devour the fat flesh cows going into the Old Testament. You have to get him in the corn. Joseph saved the war with corn. You have to get Jesus in the Quran, corn, Quran. So now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 4 and 15. Because this 10,000 was the thing that made Saul real sour. He seen something, Saul saw something. Okay. And he still believed that he was the Gentile messenger. That's why it says in 1 Corinthians 4 and 15, For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, see there go that 10,000. Yet have ye not many fathers 
and his most damnable statement he ever said. For in Christ Jesus, I have fathered you through the gospels. Now Jesus said, call no man your father. The prophet Muhammad was told to tell no one he is the father. But Paul took it upon himself to claim to be the father. The father. Yeah, this is in your Bible. Go to Philmon. He says it again. Paul believed that he was the father. In other words, he believed that he was the last and final Gentile messenger. But them shoes was too big for him. He didn't appear in Mecca with 10,000. And he was rushing. Okay, Paul was rushing. Paul was in a rush. He actually believed Christ was going to come back in his time. Paul was the wolf in sheep clothing that Jesus warned us about that would come out of Arabia. Okay, so when Paul tried to curse Islam, Jesus cursed Paul. Because Paul was the first person in Arabia claiming to be the apostle to the Gentiles. All right. So now let's conclude this message with the cup. What is this cup going into? Now, in Genesis 44 and 5, it reads, Is not this it in which my Lord drinketh, and whereby indeed he divineth? Ye have done evil in so doing. So Joseph played a trick on his brothers. Like I keep teaching. Jesus was God's Isaiah. Sent to misguide. Okay. Joseph played a trick on his brothers. And he put his cup of divination into Benjamin's sack. Now I'm going to give you scripture. The next scripture is going to be Genesis 44 and 15. And Joseph said unto them. What deed is this that ye have done? Know ye not that such a man as I can certainly divine? Read the Bible. Divination is against God's law. Okay? And the cup of divination was put in Benjamin's sack. The cup was found in the youngest brother sack. That is going into Benjamin, going into Paul. Now, this wouldn't be right if I didn't show you more scripture references. Now, the Christians, they'll take one little scripture and build a mountain on it. They'll take on the way, the truth, and the life, and, and, and they'll build a whole high tower on that. Okay? They'll take honor the son like you honor the father and butcher that whole scripture. It ain't nowhere else. Okay? So I'm going to give you references as it is written. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Now, this is going to be in 1 Samuel 28 and 6. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, seek me a woman that have a familiar spirit that I may go to her. And inquire of her. And his servant said to him. Behold. There is a woman. That have a familiar spirit at Endor. And Saul disguised himself. And put on other raiment. This is the wolf in sheep clothing. I keep trying to tell you. Stop being blind. And he went. And two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said. I pray thee divine unto me see that same word divine this is witchcraft this is going into foretelling this is going into foreseeing this is going into exactly what Paul did in Galatians 1 and 8 and the woman said unto him behold thou knowest what Saul hath done how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die. Now Saul was so wicked. Look what this man does. And Saul swore to her. By the Lord. Saying as the Lord liveth. There shall no punishment happen. To you for this thing. Now Saul started off on the right track. He started off killing. The witches. Now he's converting. 
to the witches. Same thing with Paul, whose name is Saul. He started off killing the Christians. Then what happened? He started converting to the Christians. Okay. Now let's meditate on what he just said. Saul swear to her by the Lord. Now a lot of you commandment keepers and those who claim to be keeping the commandments, you ain't keeping the commandments. The commandments say in Exodus 22 and 18, suffer not a witch to live. So this man is supposed to be saying, I swear by the Lord, I'm about to kill you. Instead, this man says, I swear by the Lord, I'm going to let you live. Okay. And I encourage you to repent. Okay, because there's coming a last day jihad when we will be given the permission to take out the witches. Going on. Eleven. Then said the woman, whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. So in other words... Saul was trying to bring up a dead prophet, okay? And this is exactly what Paul is doing in the New Testament. He's bringing up a so-called dead prophet by the name of Esau. So now you see this cup in Benjamin's sack is going into witchcraft. It is going into divination. But I got more for you. I got more for you. Now think about the corn and think about the cup, okay? Why was the cup in the sack with the corn? Because Paul was the one from the tribe of Benjamin whose symbol is the wolf who tried his best to curse the Quran. Get it, corn, Quran? This is the gospel's go spell. And I'm not telling no lie. Right here in Galatians 1 and 8. Paul says, though we are an angel from heaven, preach to you any other gospel. Let him be accursed. And we know that's how the religion of Islam started. But you better keep in mind, the first person in the Bible an angel ever appeared to was Ishmael. Wow. Now, let's finish up this whole thing. Okay. I have one scripture for you. This is going to be 1 Corinthians. Get it? Corinthians. Quran. Quran. This is proof that Paul is the man of Benjamin with the cup. 1 Corinthians 11 and 25. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had sucked, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Peter doesn't have the cup. James doesn't have the cup. The man who has the cup is Paul, is Saul, and get it, he's in 1 Corinthians Quran. This is the man whom God exposed who tried to curse the Quran. All right. I hope y'all got something out of this. I hope y'all see the truth that's right up under your nose, the truth that's right before your eyes. This is the gospel that has to be preached into all the world. And it is the truth about Benjamin. Joseph said, if you do not bring me Benjamin, you will not see my face. Ain't nothing going down until Paul is exposed. Bring me Benjamin. Judah's hands shall be in the neck of his enemies. And it's written that they wept on Saul's neck sore. And it's written that they wept on Benjamin's neck sore. The enemy of God, the enemy of all righteousness is your boy, Paul. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.